years before he took the controls of the Jupiter II. Chuck Goddard helped to pilot Situate High School to great basketball success. Well, my best memory is in 1954, uh, we went to the state finals at Boston Garden, and uh, I had a real good game, but I uh, scored a record of consecutive free throws, 11 in a row without missing. It was a high school record at the time. I'm sure it doesn't stand anymore. That's back in 1954. We got beat by uh, Wareham, I think, that year. It was Class C. Mm -hmm. I think I averaged 19 points in my senior year. My sophomore year, we went to the uh, state finals and got beat by Providence Town. And it was low point in my career. I only scored one point. And after the game, we got beat. But I cried because I let my team down at one point. But I was a sophomore in high school. Then my senior year we went, and I scored the 23, and I got the 11 in a row, and we lost. But I felt better, because I had a good game. I'm selfish, I mean, what the heck, you know? These guys say, oh, all that matters is winning the game. Let me, what mattered was making the points, you know? And I went to Holy Cross, hoping to play a little basketball. But I found out, the lights of Tommy Heinsohn, and Josie Waddle, and, and those guys, I couldn't make it, I couldn't play there. And I went into the dramatic society, and it led to my career as an actor. So as I tell my kids who are at school, when something goes against you, like my not making a basketball team, turn it around and make it work for you. And I became an actor, and I think that works for me okay. A lucky little count. Ooh. Now Friendly all, rim. Now they all have to go switch. But my basketball days were over, and I went to Hollywood. And uh, but I played a lot of two on two. And I never got beat in California either. I never got beat because my, my, uh, I played, my partner was Jamie, Jimmy Brown, the football player. James Brown. He can play basketball. Mm -hmm. He averaged 24 points at Syracuse as a sophomore. So he and I used to go to his place and play outside. And we played against other two guys and we played. And I played in uh, celebrity games out there, did pretty well. We had a game uh, where Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was our coach. He was known as Lucer Alcindor at the time. He was going to UCLA. And uh, he coached our team, which was the BEU, Black Economic Union, that I played with Jimmy Brown. That's how they all should be going. Three lucky ones. Four lucky ones. I made a lot of lucky ones. Mark, you happy with the results? Well, seven, uh, 70 percent, 80 percent I would have been happy with, 90 percent I would have been ecstatic, 100 percent I would have left school and gone back to the NBA, <laughs> which I never played in. <laughs> but to do this is fun, and I appreciate you coming down and doing it. I hope you get a lot of people to do it. I hope you get the governor. I'm working, I'm working on the president. The we president. got a letter into the Frez. Oh, I like, if, if you do president, I want a second chance so I can beat him. After a three-decade acting career in Hollywood, Mark Garden returned home to Massachusetts to become a teacher. He has worked for the last 20 years at the F.L. Chamberlain School in Middleborough. But uh, why am I here? Uh, I had 30 years acting. I was 54 and I had just finished General Hospital. I'd done some series like that. And I thought, I'm either gonna stay in Hollywood and hang around looking for that next job and drink a lot of margaritas on the, uh, in California, or I'm gonna go back to Cal Boston and do something worthwhile. So I came back and finished college at Bridgewater uh, State University and uh, got my degree in, uh, in edu special education. And I came over to Chamberlain. I've been here 20 years and I love it. And I get more satisfaction out of teaching here than I ever did as an actor. That's the truth. And the reason for that is that uh, I love the kids. And when you're walking across campus, kids say, hey, Mark, you know, and I love you, Mark. And they give you, it's just great. Wait, wait, wait. I never get that in Hollywood. I get, did get a kiss from Lonnie Anderson the other day, though. That wasn't bad. I forgot about that. Hey, Mark. Yes, I grew sir. up with loss in space. I got some issues. All right. The Cyclops, the giant Cyclops. Yeah, I killed him. Yeah, but he what, was standing. What? But at first, he was standing basically right next to the chariot. He had a boulder, no, and he missed by 25 feet. What's the story there? Is it the one eye? No. Remember, he shot in L.A. He was a Laker. That's why he couldn't shoot. No. Actually, he was up way above us. He was on a, a ridge way above us. And I, 
but we were in the chariot. The chariot used to go about five miles an hour if we were lucky. So I pull the top back in the chariot, which was made of an old logging thing, and I get my laser gun out, my laser rifle, and I shot him right here. And he, went, ah! and, and he dropped, he dropped, he dropped the rock, so he never did throw it at us. That's why he couldn't hit us. I'm gonna show you I was a hero. Threw a couple. How did you know which way he was gonna fall? Uh, <laughs> oh, we went by him. He <laughs> fell to the left because I shot him on the right side of the eye. Oh, so he had to fill, fall that way. I, I knew exactly what I was doing. I was, I was a good shot. It was a good shot then. I'm still a good shot. Seven out of ten doesn't make me happy, but yeah. I was a good shot with the laser. Uh, Mark, I assume your car runs on unleaded deuteronium, huh? I bet you get good mileage there. What the hell kind uh, of shit is that? Hey, what's it like parallel parking with a chariot? Yeah, we, the chariot, what? I don't remember. What hey, happened? whatever happened to that intergalactic hillbilly chick from one of the early episodes, huh? Can we talk about that? Oh, you're giving me a lot. I, come on. I, I, that's, these are ridiculous questions. I'm sorry. You know I mean? You're a good guy. I love the fans. I love the people watching this, but you know what? Adios. Is it fun working with Nimoy? <laughs> Nimoy? Nimoy? Leonard Nimoy? So long, guys. Yeah. Hey, nice job avoiding those media storms, Major West. You got it. <laughs> Mark, it's gift time and it's your choice. Yep. This is our original. It's a four-color big pen. A teacher could absolutely use this. You I would sure like can, but I, or, do, but I do lose these. Uh, or, this is new. Yeah. The 10 from the line, Nightlight, with Bill Spaceman Lee and yours truly. Oh, it's no contest. They're going Bill nuts. Lee and you, this got, is great. i got to stop making money off these things. All right, you ready, Mark, for the dumb Lost in Space questions? Yeah, I love them. All oh, wait, right. wait, 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 this is my good side. You, All right. You got to be over here. Everybody's got a good I side. I don't have one. This is, no, we you right here. <laughs> Turn around. Yeah? Here's your uh, good side, right there. <laughs> I should have turned back there. Oh. I'm 74. I've been shooting uh, since uh, I was about 10 years old. You must be exhausted. <laughs> I'm tired. I got my right arm's going to fall off. Professor Robinson has gone down as one of the top 50 all-time TV fathers. I'm ready to dispute that. How could you let Will go off with Dr. Smith episode after episode? I don't think he was that good a father, Professor Robinson. What's your stance? Well, I, one of the top 50? Yeah. Well, that's a lot of fathers, you know? Let's see, that would be the Cartwright guy. He was good. But he just let little Joe go off by himself with girls. <laughs> but going off with Dr. Smith is a little different than going off with girls, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't put him in the top 50 now. No, he's, he's not with us anymore. Dr. Smith. Uh, Guy Williams, Zorro, uh, he didn't know anybody. He didn't ask me for advice, so no. what the heck, you know, I wouldn't have let him go out. <laughs> I want to kill Smith, you know? But, no, I get, I get fan letters, yeah. I get some. Uh, and I, a lot of people write to get pictures, and also I send my book out to PayPal, so I get a lot of, I sent one out the other day, for, out to Norway, so people from all over the world have seen Lost in Space. It's been playing for about 45, 46 years, somewhere in, in the world. And uh, that's how I got so rich. Uh, well, I'll tell you the truth. I never got any money from Lost in Space. When we did the show, we didn't get paid much. And then now there's been reruns. You, get paid, you don't get paid for reruns anymore. Just the new show since 1974, I think. But that's okay, because I figure this way. If I was getting a $10 a show for all these years, I would be sitting out in California on the beach drinking pina coladas, and I'd be a waste. You're right? It doesn't sound too bad, does it? <laughs> No, but otherwise, no, I'm back here in Boston where we got the snow and crisp air. And uh, I came back because the Red Sox, Celtics, and Bruins, you know, what a time to be. I'm lucky. What a time to be a, a sports fan Let's here in Boston. Jacket. I want to get back. You know what? If I had one of these with my picture on it with you, I could sell them for $30 at shows.